Hello and welcome to Electric Focus and today we're going to be looking at the difference between AC and DC charging and also the charging curve and what that means. So let's get straight into the video. Okay, so AC and DC charging. So what's the difference? The first thing to say is that AC and DC are completely different types of current. So AC or alternating current changes direction as it travels or alternates and direct current just travels in a straight line. Now the electricity we get from the national grid is always AC, alter alternating current. But batteries store DC. So the AC current that comes from the grid needs to be converted into DC to be able to be stored in batteries. So how does that happen? Well, it happens in two ways. First of all, your car has an onboard charger, which converts the AC into DC. And that's happening when you are doing charging at home or on the go in destinations such as supermarkets, workplace, on the side of the road, and you'll normally spot AC chargers because they come untethered. So that means you have to plug your cable into the car and plug it into the unit. So that's AC charging. DC charging, the charger itself converts the AC into DC. So you can get a bigger converter in a charger and therefore you can get much faster speeds. And that's why on a DC charger, you get rapid charging and ultra fast charging, speeds of up to 350 kilowatts. And that's because it's happening in the charger and not in the car. So let's talk about AC charging. So when you're at home, you're charging from your wall box, which is normally a 7.4 kilowatt charger. So that needs to be converted from AC into DC to get into your battery. So your onboard charger does that. Now, the speed that that can deliver depends on the charger itself, 7.4 kilowatts, and the charger within the car. Now, that varies, but normally it's seven kilowatts or 11 kilowatts. There are some 22 kilowatt converters. But most houses in the UK only have what's called single phase electric, and the maximum you can get with single phase electric is 7.4 kilowatts. So it doesn't matter if you've got 11 kilowatts in the car, you're only gonna get that seven kilowatts as your maximum speed. However, when you're out and about and charging on AC, and they're normally maximum 22 kilowatts. However, it doesn't matter if it's 22 kilowatts and you've only got a seven kilowatt onboard charger, because you're still only gonna get that maximum on AC charging of seven kilowatts, because that's all it can do is convert the charging speed into the battery, so AC into DC, based on that charging speed you've got in your car of seven kilowatts. So let's talk about DC charging. So as we said earlier, what happens in DC charging is the charger itself converts the AC from the grid into DC, and then that goes directly into the battery at very fast speeds. So 50 kilowatts and above. However, it's important to understand the capability of your car. So for example, I have the Jaguar I-Pace and that has a maximum speed it can take of 104 kilowatts. So it doesn't matter if I turn up to a 350 Ionity charger, 350 kilowatts, for example, I'm still only gonna get a maximum of 104 kilowatts. So it's important to know that. You may have a car that can only take up to 50 kilowatts. So again, it doesn't matter if you turn up to a 150 kilowatt charger, you're still only gonna get that maximum 50 kilowatts. Now let's get onto the charging curve when you're DC charging. First thing to say is AC charging, because it's quite slow, it's a fairly constant speed that you get, but it is very slow because the battery can continue to take that speed. When it comes to DC charging, it works slightly differently, particularly when you get to ultra fast speeds. So to explain that, I've got a bottle of water and a glass. Now the bottle represents the charger and the water within it is the energy coming out. And then the glass is your battery in the car. So if I start pouring, I can pour quite quickly 
And then as I get to the top, I have to slow down, slow down before I get to the top. And I'll just go that far before I spill it. So that's similar to how a battery works. A battery regulates the power coming in to protect the battery. So when it first starts receiving a charge, it takes the maximum power. And then as it goes through the charge, it starts to reduce that power as it gets towards the end, 100%, the full glass. So let's have a look at what happens on a charge now using this graph and then to explain the charging curve. So I'm going to use the example of the Jaguar I-Pace in this case. Now that takes a maximum speed of 104 kilowatts. So looking at the graph, you've got power on this side, so that's the maximum power a charger delivers. And then at the bottom, you've got state of charge, which is where your battery is when you turn up to the charger. So what percentage of the battery is charged? So if I turn up to a, say, 150 kilowatt charger, I know the maximum speed I can get is 104 kilowatts. But I turn up with 10%, then I should expect to get that 104 kilowatts when it starts charging. Now, a slight caveat to that, weather does make a difference. So if it's very cold or very hot, then that can impact charging speeds. But this is based on ideal temperatures, basically sort of 70 degrees. You know, you should expect to get that 104 kilowatts. So if I turn up at 10%, I'm likely to get 104 kilowatts. If I turn up at say 80%, then I'm probably likely to get around the 50 kilowatt speed. Now that's on a Jaguar i -Pace. It does vary by car. Every car has a different charging curve, but they're all pretty similar in the way they look. So very fast speeds when you first get there and as it goes through the charge, it starts to slow down. Now what's important to know is when you get to 80% and you're getting below 50%, 50 sorry, kilowatts, then the charging speed's getting much, much slower and it ends up when you get to 100%, as you saw with the glass, you really have to slow down. Then you get sort of 10 kilowatt speeds. Now at that rate, you're better really to have left that charger at 80% and gone on to another charger than you are to sit there between that 80 and 100% and wait for that charge to get to 100. Now, you may hear people talking about this quite a lot and some people's opinion is that all charges should finish at 80% because it can be quite annoying if you see a car sitting there between 80 and 100% knowing that they're gonna take a long time now to get to that last bit of the charge. They might as well just move off, leave the charger for somebody else and then get on their way. Their whole journey will be quicker anyway because if they keep charging at the faster speeds, it's gonna be a quicker journey. It's as simple as that. Okay, so that's AC and DC charging explained and also the charging curve. I hope that was useful. As always, please like and subscribe and I will speak to you soon.